This decade saw Hollywood compete with television by way of vast epics, outrageous sci-fi, and stark realism. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, in this installment of our series on the greatest movies of all time, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies of the 1950s. You're tearing me apart! What? For our series of the best movies of all time, we've chosen 10 movies per decade based on their iconic status, critical acclaim, box office success, and watchability. And just so you know, we're not necessarily choosing the movies your film studies professor would pick. So sit back and relax as we hop on our motorcycle, whistle a tune, and sing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. Hey, Stella! Number 10, A Streetcar Named Desire. Oh, you're still sister. Yes. Oh, hi. The movie, based on the play by Tennessee Williams, follows the relationship between a shamed Southern belle, her sister, and her sister's abusive husband. Now that's how I'm gonna clear the table. Although the film was edited for themes not yet acceptable on the wide screen, it was still highly critically acclaimed, winning four Oscars. It also gave Marlon Brando a vehicle to flex his acting chops, landing him an Oscar nod for his role as the brutish Stanley Kowalski. Rain forever. You know, it's too bad you didn't connect. You could have gone to juvenile hall. Number nine, Rebel Without a Cause. You stepped into school and singing. Nobody does that ever. I'm sorry, I mean, it's my first day here and nobody told me about it, so. No one knows hardship like suburban teens. In this case, these suburban teens have seen some wild days. James Dean plays a rebellious youth whose family just doesn't understand him. What? You, you say one thing, he says another, and everybody changes back again! The movie is ostensibly about the dangers of wayward youth and the growing generation gap. But it really just managed to propel Dean into stardom, turning him into a heartthrob overnight even though the star died a month before its release. John! I got the bullets! Number eight, Seven Samurai. I am not a person, a person. But I have a lot of money. But I don't have a the story, told by employing a unique storytelling technique at the time whereby the characters are enlisted gradually into the team, sees a small village hire seven samurai to help ward off impending marauders. <laughs> Directed by Akira Kurosawa, Seven Samurai marked the first major Japanese crossover hit for American audiences. Painstakingly crafted in its story and cinematography, Seven Samurai's influence has never faltered with many spaghetti westerns and subsequent films mimicking Kurosawa's plots, themes, and directorial style. You may conquer the land, you may slaughter the people, but that is not the end. We will rise again. Number seven, Ben-Hur. Tyrus. I've had no trial. This film is epic in scale and ambitious in scope. It was also a smash hit. We watch as the titular star goes from friend to slave to expert chariot racer, meets Jesus, and learns the message of peace and forgiveness. For this death, and this beginning. Much like Battleship Potemkin did previously with its Odessa step sequence, Ben-Hur changed cinema with its famed chariot race. Thanks to a captivating and unwaveringly human story, the film swept the Oscars, winning 11 out of 12 categories. Somebody call the police. Come on, come on. Number six, North by Northwest. Do you know this man? <gasps> Mistaken for a spy can be life-threatening. 
just ask Cary Grant's character in this Alfred Hitchcock classic. As he struggles to evade certain death, he must also save the life of his secret agent love interest. I could use a drink. It has all the makings of an entertaining thriller, and not only were audiences and critics delighted by its charms, the stylish film also captured the paranoid vibe of the time perfectly. To us, to a long and lasting friendship. Meaning, from now on, I'm not going to let you out of my sight, sweetheart. Okay, that's 11. Guilty. Was Bonnie not guilty? One. Number five, 12 Angry Men. When there were 11 votes for guilty, it's not easy to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it first. Shadowing a 12-man jury as they deliberate over the life or death of an accused teen, this Sidney Lumet movie was unique for its time. Utilizing one set for all but a few minutes of its runtime, the movie was heavily driven by character and plot. What's the matter with you guys? You all know he's guilty. He's got to burn. You're letting him slip through our fingers. While audiences had to eventually warm up to the story, 12 Angry Men found a captive audience with film critics who praised its themes and the deliberation process. But we have a reasonable doubt, and that's something that's very valuable in our system. No jury can declare a man guilty unless it's sure. Number four, Rear Window. A wheelchair-bound photographer thinks he may have witnessed a neighbor's murder, and it's up to him to prove it. Another Hitchcock thriller, the film sees its protagonist, portrayed by Hitchcock regular Jimmy Stewart, enlist the help of his girlfriend, played by Grace Kelly, in an attempt to solve the case. You mean to say you can explain everything that's gone on over there and is still going on? No, neither can you. Not only did this suspenseful film snag Hitchcock four Oscar nominations, it also solidified his legacy as a cinematic heavy hitter. Number three, Singing in the Rain. Gene Kelly plays a famous silent movie star with an insufferable leading lady who falls in love with an ambitious, struggling actress. I haven't been able to think of anything but you ever since. Honest? As they adapt to the modern era of talking movies, their true talent, or lack thereof, is thrust to the forefront. Hold on, you couldn't kiss me like that and not mean it, just a teensy weensy bit. Meet the greatest actor in the world. I'd rather kiss a tarantula. But you don't mean that. The film is a delightful musical affair that wasn't an instant hit at the box office, but it grew in influence over the years, eventually earning universal acclaim. And singing in the rain. Number two, The Bridge on the River Kwai. I hope they can remain soldiers, Colonel. As for me, I'm just a slave. British soldiers stuck in a Japanese prison during World War II are tasked with constructing a bridge to aid the Japanese war effort. Initially sabotaging the process, the POWs are eventually prompted by a British lieutenant, played by Alec Guinness, to build a perfect construction. And there's the challenge. I beg your pardon, sir. You mean you really want them to build a bridge? Caught in the middle, with loyalties and friendships tested, and external forces plotting to destroy the bridge, the soldier's struggle was both a critical and commercial success, which nabbed seven Oscars. Before we unveil our pick for best movie of the 1950s, here are a few honorable mentions. Now you, Harv, I always figured you for guts. But I never give you any credit for brains till now. What's that mean? I got rhythm. I got music. I got my gal who could ask for anything more. Harrington has never by word, look, thought, or suggestion indicated anything to me but her adoration for you and her happiness at our being in love. Number one, On the Waterfront. 
Here, kid, here's half a bill. Go get your load on. No, I'm okay, Charlie. Oh, uh, thanks. Present from your uncle Johnny. Murderous union bosses and corruption are the name of the game in this 1950s standard. Made as a response to critics of director Elia Kazan's decision to identify communists to the House Un-American Activities Committee, the film follows an ex-boxer turned dock worker as he fights to do what's right in a world fraught with deception. You think you're God Almighty, but you know what you are? Come on! You're a cheap, lousy, dirty, stinking mug! Marlon Brando's performance earned him the Oscar for Best Actor, and the gritty, multi-Oscar winner itself became one of the most influential movies ever made. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie of the 50s? For more thrilling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.